Huh? So in this poster, we're looking at essentially how how a light field display can pass the visual Turing test. The visual Turing test is essentially can we produce imagery which is you know indistinguishable from real live objects, right? So uh, one of the main you know this we understand there's some work that's been done to understand the uh, the limits you know the perception limits of a 2D display are well understood, but a 3D display adds an element of depth. So uh, we've we've worked on some models essentially to allow us to uh, you know, figure out what how depth resolution will change with depth in a 3D display. So you would need to be able to have to ensure a certain amount of resolution within a certain amount of depth from a 3D display in order to be able to pass the visual Turing test. Uh, and so we've looked, we've created an acuity limited viewer model and uh, essentially experimented on this model using a light field display simulator. And we've kind of shown that the, the model doesn't really quite match the results in the simulator, but they're closer than, than conventional uh, depth of field based depth resolution models. And so we're working towards, uh, you know, continuing to improve this work essentially. Because uh, the eye is an intricate system, right? Exactly. The eye is like uh, blinking and moving and all this stuff, and That's right. you need to simulate it or, or adapt for it. Or That's right. Yeah. So this this we're we're kind of using uh, you know metrics like like a, the same type of metric that a, a a an ophthalmologist uses in order to measure uh, you know visual acuity, right? So it, it takes small letters, right? But uh, of course, an eye is, is very complex, right? So, you, and also when you're looking at a 3D display, you're looking at it with two eyes. So the binocular effects in terms of visual perception would have a, a quite an effect. And uh, how far is the visual Turing test passing uh, light light display from market? <laughs> I you think know? it's quite far away. Yeah, I think. We did some calculations with this model, and I think we came to how many, many trillions of pixels would be required, many pixels, you know, trillions of rays would be required, so we, we think it probably will take a while yet, so it's a, a nice long uh, road map to, to look ahead for. How many pixels are they doing now? Just a few million, right? Uh, there are light like, displays with billions of pixels right now, yeah. Billions of pixels yeah, I, I, right I, now? I believe Avalon Holographics has, has billions. Uh, Which light, one? Avalon? Avalon and Lakeville Labs, I believe they have billions, right? In their in their fully larger tiled up displays, yeah. And Fovi 3D is doing something nice. Fovi, uh, Fovi, yeah, they've had some very high hundreds of millions of pixels on their displays. I think they're they're actually folded now, but yeah. Uh, so, so the way they get so many pixels is by combining a bunch of AK displays somehow, and with a bunch of uh, 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 optical solution to combine them. Uh, that's yeah. That's as I understand. That's the strategy of of these companies, where they're sort of very small uh, projectors or small displays, and then combine the optics to get that kind of result. Yeah. And is it psychovisual uh, extra? Uh, that's the reason you need extra detailed extra pixels because you you might move just a little bit, and if there's not enough pixels, then it, you lose the Turing test. Exactly. Yeah. The smallest thing that deviates from you know, the, the light that you see in reality, your, your brain will probably pick up on that and, and the test will fail. Yeah.